Good morning. So let's talk about self-love. There's a lot of confusion that's happening with self-love. I've been actually uh, coaching and teaching people self-love for over 15 years when I co-created a program called The Power of Self-Love with um, another person who was my co-author. And the power of self-love is there's nothing like it because the highest vibration in the universe is love. It's the master vibration. It's the manifestation vibration. And so how do we take that master vibration, that, that frequency, it's, it's a feeling, it's, a, it's an experience, but it also needs to come through our consciousness. And we can experience self-love in many different ways. So self-love doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to go get a manicure pedicure, although it can, but that's not the end or extent of it. I'm going to go get a massage once a week and that's my, my self-love. Yeah, that's a good part. It, it's an experience of taking care of yourself. So let's break this down. Self-love, first of all, is attuning yourself, aligning yourself to the frequency of what the divine in you already feels. You already have self-love because the divine loves you infinitely, unconditionally, all the time. And so that divine, that is your life, wouldn't be here if you didn't have it, that's beating your heart, digesting your food, pulsating your blood, filling up your cells, that part of you is love. And it loves you. So when you tap into it, when you connect with it, just with your intention to feel it, that is self-love. That's an experience of allowing that already, that beautiful high vibrational frequency that is available to us. It's not outside. You don't have to go get it. You don't have to go buy it. It's already within you. It's in your heart. When you are attuning to that, that is self-love. When you take the parts of your own individual consciousness and you attune with that frequency and vibration, then you are practicing self-love. So for example, the words that you say, right? What do you say about yourself or about others? Because that's a form of self-love. Let me explain. It's probably easier to understand. Well, of course, what I say about myself, if you call yourself an idiot, that's not self-love. If you say, hey, that's okay, you know what? You'll get it next time. That's encouragement, that's self-love. The things that you say, encouragement, excitement, being able to um, appreciate yourself, have gratitude for yourself, pick yourself up when you're feeling down, be able to call a friend, you know, we'll get into that. But the, feel, the, the experience of what do you say about yourself? And then what do you say about others and other things in this universe? Because when you are judging someone or something else, you're disconnecting from your alignment because the divine in you that's breathing you, that's always loving you, doesn't judge another person as bad or wrong. And so out of a place of self-love, when you don't judge another person as bad or wrong, you're experiencing self-love. When you are judging or criticizing someone else or condemning someone else or being the persecutor with someone else, you're out of alignment and you're not practicing self-love. So just in what you say, let's break this down. Number one, in the words that you speak and the language that you use about yourself or others, that's a form of self-love. Number two is the thoughts that you think right? What are you thinking about yourself? Are you condemning yourself? Are you hard on yourself? Are you judging yourself? Are you feeling jealous? Are you feeling completely dissatisfied with your life? What are the thoughts? I'm never going to, no matter what, be able to find a partner. I'm never going to, no matter what, be able to lose weight. What are the thoughts, those chronic thoughts? Because when you're out of alignment with your thoughts, when you, those thoughts are stemming from lack and separation and drama, you're not practicing self-love. But thoughts like, you know what? We're going to get this today. I, I believe in myself today. I have faith that I can succeed. I have faith that I can do whatever it is I need to do to succeed or to have happiness. Allowing yourself to encourage yourself, feeling grateful for yourself, for your life. 
having a practice of gratitude and appreciation, that's a form of self-love. So the words that we say, the thoughts that we think, the perspectives that we hold, what do we believe to be true about ourselves? Because we create from our beliefs. Our own self-perception, we cannot outcreate it. If we think of ourselves as chubby or fat, and we want to create our ideal body, we won't be able to outcreate that. We won't be able to create, no matter how much we work out or how well we eat. If we have this perception that we're not in good shape and our family's never been in good shape and that, or that I can't make a lot of money or, you know, I'm, I'm really bad at relationships. Those beliefs, those perceptions, those expectations, are they in alignment with the energy of love, of abundance? Or are they on the spectrum of lack? How do you know? The ones in lack or limitation feel bad. The ones in abundance and love feel good. This is how you know. And this leads to the fourth part of self-love is your emotions. Do you allow yourself to feel yourself? Most people, I know I was there for years and years, suppress their emotions. They won't allow themselves to feel themselves. And when you have something happen and you close down your heart, you close down your emotions, you're not practicing self-love. When something happens and it's hurtful or it's shocking or it angers you, to allow yourself to feel the energy of that emotion, to pulsate it out, and then to bring in the energy of love or compassion, that is a form, that is a practice, a daily practice of self-love. Something happens, you have an emotional reaction to it, you let yourself feel it for 90 seconds, you process it out, keep your thoughts on good positive energy, bring in the energy that you want. That is an act of self-love. So giving yourself permission to be emotionally intelligent, to have self-awareness is self-love. To manage your emotions is, is an act of self-love. All these things, being able to know, I'm thinking this way, it doesn't feel good, I'm going to shift it, I'm going to find a better thought, that I'm going to find a better feeling thought, that in the moment is an act of self-love. Now let's talk about actions, because that's the fifth part. You got words, thoughts, perspective, emotions, actions. How we relate with other people, do we just kind of take their stuff or do we put up a boundary? Do we say yes when we mean yes and no when we mean no? Or are we saying yes when we mean no? That's not self-love. When someone invites you to do something and you just think, ah, that doesn't sound fun to me. I, I don't I, I don't really want to do that or I'm not up for that. And to say, you know what, thanks for the invitation. That's not going to work out for me. I'm going to pass. That's a form of self-love. Because self-love doesn't necessarily mean being selfish and only thinking of yourself. It's a healthy selfish. It's knowing what your boundaries are. It's knowing what works for you and what doesn't. And knowing when someone crosses a boundary to be able to then communicate to them and say, you know what, that didn't feel good. That was an ouch for me. I would prefer to be talked to in a different way, right? So self-love is the actions that we take. And then the actions that we take, yes, that's where we talk about, do we go to spas? Do we take ourselves for a nice weekend retreat away from the dogs and the husbands and the family, in my case? And to be able to focus on work and downloading and connection, that's a form of self-love. Do we do the things that we need to do to take care of our physical bodies, like eating well, getting proper sleep, exercising, drinking plenty of water? Yes, these are also forms of self-love. Paying your bills on time, not procrastinating, right? Doing things so that at the end of the day, you're doing the things that keep you in alignment with self-love, with love, that feel good. So whenever you, in your universe, 
with your free will are choosing something that's good for you and it feels good, that is self-love. It's taking care of you mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Self-love is when you have a program that's, you know, presented to you and you lean in and go, oh my gosh, that's the program I want to take. Then you do it. Or if you find out about a program, you're like, oh, I just don't want to miss out. And oh, you know, and you do it because you don't want to miss out. That's coming from lack. That's not self-love. So because we have free will and choice and we're always the one that chooses and you have a stream of energy that is unconditional love and it's infinite. It's beating your heart. It's not outside of you. It's inside of you. As you open up your heart and you feel that unlimited love pouring out of you, for you, to you, and extending it to everyone that you know in every aspect of your life, that is practicing self-love. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please comment below what other topics you'd like us to cover. And if you'd like more episodes, please subscribe to the channel or check out our podcast on christywhitman.com.